Now, your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a reflection of your external environment. It's an artifact of all the things you've learned and experienced to date. Feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences. And if you're feeling the same way every single day, it means two things. Number one, nothing new is happening in your life. And if those emotions are driving certain thoughts, and those thoughts then are creating the same emotions, then your thinking equal to your emotional state means you're thinking in the past. And if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, as long as you're thinking equal to your familiar emotions, you keep reaffirming the same past experiences in your life over and over again. Our research shows without a doubt in the last three years that when students of our work combine a clear intention, now intention is a vision, a potential that already exists in the quantum field that you get to select. And when you ask yourself a question like, what would it be like to be healthy? What would it be like to be wealthy? What would it be like to be free or to be in love? The moment you ask that creative question, a part of your brain called the frontal lobe turns on. That's the crowning achievement of a human being. Once that area of the brain turns on, it's like a great symphony leader. It looks out of the landscape of the entire brain and it begins to randomly select different networks of neurons that are connected to the things you've learned in your life or the experiences you had. And it begins to seamlessly paste them together to create an ideal, a vision, or an internal representation. That is a potential experience that's awaiting you. But it's not enough to just have the mind involved. Thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. Once you can begin to emotionally embrace that future reality before it's made manifest, when you combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion, the freedom, the joy, the inspiration, the genuine love that you feel or gratitude from that experience, the moment you do that, your body, as the unconscious mind, begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment. Now you're moving into a new state of being, into a new personality. And a new personality creates a new personal reality. The research that we've done shows that when we teach people how to regulate their internal states, to begin to create more coherence in their brain, and to generate elevated emotions like joy and gratitude and inspiration, that not only does the brain become coherent, but so does the heart. And when the brain is coherent, the heart is coherent. When the heart is coherent, the brain is coherent. And so why don't we live by these states on a daily basis? Primarily because the majority of the time that we live in our waking state of consciousness, 70% of the time, you and I are living by the hormones of stress. And living in stress is living in survival. And when you're living in survival, the very chemicals of survival cause you to function as materialist, defining your reality with your senses. You pay attention to objects and things and people. You begin to believe that your outer world is more real than your inner world. And the side effect of this over time begins to cause us to feel separate from possibility. Why? Because when you're threatened by some predator or some danger in your life, it's not a time to go in. It's not a time to trust the unknown. It's not a time to open your heart and feel love. It's not a time to communicate. It's not a time to create. It's not a time to learn. It's a time to survive. So then, in order for us to create then, we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to occur. And most importantly, we want you to understand when you're in the creative state and when you're not. And if you were to take a little time every day and apply some of the principles in changing beliefs and perceptions about yourself in your life, and what is a belief other than a thought you keep thinking over and over again? And all beliefs are based on past experiences. And in order for you to change a belief or perception about yourself in your life, you have to make a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carries a level of energy that's greater than the hardwired programs in your brain 
and the emotional conditioning in your body. And your body literally has to respond to a new mind. And when the choice becomes an experience that you never forget, that's the moment the past biologically no longer exists in you. And people around the world are changing beliefs and perceptions that are based on past experiences from 30 and 40 and 50 years ago. And the side effect is that they're creating new lives. All potentials in the quantum field exist in the present moment. So that when you sit down to create something in your future, it's important for you to understand that only when you're in the present moment do you have access to possibility. Once you understand what it's like to be in the present moment, change your energy. And when you change your energy to match a potential that already exists in the quantum field electromagnetically, when your energy matches that experience energetically, that's when reality is drawn to you. That's when the new experience begins to find you. So whether you want to change your health or create something new in your life or experience a mystical moment, a lucid dream, whatever your passion or desire is, specifically select those potentials and create the life that you want so that you don't have to go and get it, that in fact it comes to you. So think about this. Most people wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is they get in touch with the feeling that defines them. The moment they get in touch with that feeling, whether it's suffering or guilt or shame or judgment or unworthiness, they begin to start their day from that emotional state. In other words, they're already living in the past. And once they turn on the certain chemicals that drive certain brain circuits, they expect their life to change but they're thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions, and living by the same emotions, but secretly expecting their life to change. What if then, in a small example, you became conscious of those emotions that keep you anchored to the past, and you begin to change your emotional state means you would begin to change your energy. Now, from a quantum perspective, the thoughts that you think are like the electrical charge in the quantum field. The feelings that you emote are like the magnetic charge in the quantum field. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event back. So you are broadcasting information on a daily basis into the field. When you change your energy, you literally change your life. And if you're able to maintain that change in energy, you will begin to draw new experiences to you. And that's when you become the scientist in measuring fruits of your efforts. And as I said, common people all over the world in all different cultures are doing the uncommon. They're healing themselves from diseases, chronic diseases, serious, potentially fatal diseases. They're creating wonderful new jobs and opportunities. They're winning the lottery. They're having mystical experiences that begin to uncover the mystery of who we really are. And I think that the biggest lie that we've ever been told is that we're linear beings living a linear life. But in fact, we are dimensional beings living a dimensional life. And so uncovering the mystery of the self, beginning to look deeper and understanding well, who we are, that if knowledge is power, then knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. And I want to inspire you and motivate you so that you can begin to apply these principles so that you get to be the recipient of your own efforts. For example, we've had several people in our work heal themselves of very difficult conditions. One lady in particular experienced a very sudden loss. The event in itself produced very strong emotions. Those emotions then lingered for periods of time and it began to define her as a personality. Now, it's a scientific fact that the hormones of stress push the genetic buttons and create disease. So the long-term effects by living by those chemicals literally are harmful to our body, justified or not. Now, we've all had traumatic events in our life and some of those traumatic events brand us both neurologically and chemically. In this woman's experience, the event was so traumatic that the emotions lingered for weeks and months and finally years, 
it became part of her identity. And so, as a result of the long-term effects and her personality being defined by the past instead of the future, living by those same emotions began to break her body down. In a very short amount of time, she developed paralysis from the waist down. The result of the effect of the paralysis created more stress in her life. Now she couldn't work. She couldn't take care of her children. She couldn't make any money. She couldn't take care of her house. She had to get assistance from other people and her mother had to move in with her. And because of all of the effects of those circumstances, her stress hormones went up. In a short amount of time, she developed ulcerations on all the mucous membranes of her body. Those mucous membranes with all the ulcers caused her to no longer eat properly. She couldn't eat. And because she couldn't eat, the chemical imbalance from no longer eating enhanced her stress levels even further. Within three to four months, she developed esophageal cancer. Now, this woman was smart enough to realize that probably the effect of those chemicals were the reason why she developed her condition. In other words, she said to herself, if I created this condition because I was living by this event, in other words, emotionally I was attached to my past, is it possible then to uncreate it and create something else? So she began the work and the meditations in every single day, whether she felt like it or not, she practiced her meditations. And for sure, she had certain days where she didn't feel like doing her meditations because she didn't feel well, but she did them anyway. She also made the decision that she wasn't going to get up from her meditations until she was in love with life. Now, to the materialist, the person who's defining reality with their senses, to the materialist, there's no reason for her to be in love with life. Why? She, she had a traumatic event. She had no job, she had no money, she was paralyzed, she had a diagnosis of cancer, she couldn't eat, she was in internal pain, she was in external pain. But she said, I'm going to teach my body emotionally what my future could feel like before it's made manifest. And every single day, day by day, she overcame a small part of herself. And within a very short period of time, about a year, she was able to reverse those conditions. To this day, this woman has no cancer. She has no ulcerations in any of her mucous membranes. She has no paralysis or pain in inside of her body or outside of her body. And she has a new life. So new personality creates a new personal reality. The disease exists in the old personality. She's literally become someone else. Now, if you, if you talk to this woman about that experience, she'll tell you that experience was her greatest teacher. Most of us though, when we can't overcome an experience, when someone says to us, why are we this way? We typically say we are this way because of some event that's happened to us in the past, which means I haven't been able to change since that event. That event altered me emotionally. But once we understand that we can be defined by a vision of the future, instead of the neurocircuitry and chemicals and emotions of the past. This is when we change our personality.